Yes. Yeah. It is like now. Thank you. So we're going to start off. Yeah. First of all, I would like to introduce uh, Professor Mario. Professor Maju is the senior architect uh, in, in Telgoro. Mm -hmm. Earlier, he was a professor in uh, uh, Argentina, uh, University of uh, Lee Pampa. And uh, uh, he is the senior solution architecture and service lead at Software Service Monetization Next C uh, OCTO in Inter Corporation USA. He is a former professor from National University of La Pampa, Argentina, and over 20 year academician experience, former head of data science research group, and honorary professor from MIT, Noida. He, he had a specialty in managerial engineering from the NQU in 2004, a specialty in the data mining, knowledge discovery, in database from the University of Durham's uh, 2007. And he had chaired a number of conferences in, in Argentina and abroad. And he was uh, uh, he published numerous scientific articles in journals, work on conferences, and uh, as a book chapter. And he is the author of a number of books. And he is, a, uh, uh, he is one of the good person also. So I think first to that perhaps final, yeah, please give your keynote. Thank you. Thank you so much for your for your kind presentation, dear friend. Just a quick comment. The recording is paused in, in this moment. That is okay, or the recording needs to be restarted. Okay. Okay, thank you so much for the kind presentation, dear friend. Okay, can I start or yes, uh, please let Okay, okay, thank you so much. I will share my screen in this moment. Um, can you see my screen? Yeah, I see that uh, okay, that is great. So thank you so much for this kind invitation. In this opportunity, I would like to talk about data processing and edge computing and how this dynamic path is um, very important uh, in terms of challenges, opportunities, and also around um, different point of interest in which the research and the industrial application can be articulated. So in this talk, I would like to organize the presentation around a few points. Initially, a brief, a brief, a brief introduction uh, associated with the different main concepts and challenges and opportunities around the edge computing and data processing. Also, I would like to introduce the IoT and Unify Edge framework. Uh, this is a framework in which Intel has released uh, around two years ago, working on different industries and, uh, and highlighting the different main concerns or, or topics that will be 
consider in a final influence solutions when we are trying to create some kind of deployment focus on uh, edge computing or I internet of things or the relationship between them. Also, I would like to talk a bit about the edge inference viewpoint based on OpenVINO. OpenVINO is a very important library that is free to use, free to download, and it allows us to optimize different uh, deep learning models uh, to be deployed in different uh, Intel uh, hardware ar uh, based architectures. Uh, after that, I would like briefly to introduce some reference implementations in which you will see different computer vision applications using OpenVINO as a framework in order to deploy a few solutions. There, I, I will show the different GitHub repositories in which you, you can download the different source code and try yourself the different uh, approaches. And at the end, some uh, aspect related to EA ethics. Uh, it is an important thing, mainly considering not only the, uh, the um, sensor networks, but also all the aspects related to video processing. The different aspect with, uh, in, in which we need to take special care because there, is a, uh, there are a lot of regulations, uh, concerns and opportunities too, but it is important to, um, to highlight these aspects in this context. Okay, briefly, we are dealing in a, an Internet of the Context in, or um, edge computing or a mix of them in which we have some limitations. One of the critical limitations is the energy consumption and the um, lifetime associated with different batteries. Uh, we have a limited data processing resources uh, we are not dealing necessarily with very uh, powerful servers, but also we want to, uh, to be as close to the entity under monitoring as possible. So we prefer to use um, tiny hardware, but uh, the tiny hardware is located as close to the uh, entity under monitoring as possible, and we can collect uh, directly different data, video, audio, and different kind of streaming that could be very helpful to feed and decision-making process. In, in, in this context, of course, the, all this information consume a lot of bandwidth. So uh, how to transmit cleverly data plus audio plus video and another kind of data is not a minor things. It is essential because it impacts directly in the in the lifetime of the battery lifetime. It impacts on the uh, local uh, data, uh, um, uh, local resource processing, and different uh, strategy have focus on the um, resource management. So the idea is, hey, I need to collect data. I need to collect different source or kind of data, but I want to communicate data in a clever way. It means I don't want to, to say, hey, this whole patient is associated with 57 Celsius degree of temperature, Do, uh, maybe throughout one hour. Now, please let me know when an important change in the corporal temperature happens, or at least one time every five minutes, every 10 minutes, in case of I need to have a heartbeat associated with the old patient. But it, it is important because it impacts directly on the kind of data uh, processing strategy that we pretend to use. In this context, the reliability is a critical thing. Why? Because we need to monitor, let's say, an opation, but also we need to ensure that all the collections, data collection system is working properly. It is not only about collect data from an opation using a given sensor. It is also about how good is the sensor that is collecting our data 
Is the sensor calibrated? Why? Because all the data are collected and they are fed to a given decision-making model. But when it's scrap in in the decision model, scrap out from the decision model. So we need to deal with information and the reliability there is a key asset in terms of monitoring the whole system. We are expecting that the whole system is working according to our requirements. And to ensure that we need to monitor the whole system through the reliability to get the scalability. Why we, we want the scalability is the only way in which we can reach the economy scale. So yes, we are dealing with a lot of sensors like a data sources, but there, even when they are cheap, extensible, easily accessible, we have some concerns. One of them is the heterogeneity. Why? Because we are dealing with a lot of different sensors connecting uh, to different single board computers. We have a lot of single board computers uh, that are acting simultaneously from different, um, uh, different points, different locations. The data are pushing to maybe a gateway with higher capacity than the single board computer, but this hierarchical organization of the data processing and the data collection implies that I need to deal with syntactical and semantical data interoperability. In other words, I must understand what the data means and how to interpret the data. And in the context of the heterogeneity, it is a main concern because we need to deal, let's say, with fusion data, but we need to know how to fusion different data streams coming from different data sources and to, get, and to gather all the information in a single point and organize accordingly in order to transmit one single stream, but a consistent stream. The consistent implies coherence, accessibility. The data need to, rep to be representative enough and need to be coherent with the concept that the data is trying to represent. Let's say, if you receive a corporate temperature and you are reading 1,000, the, the point is, yes, I receive a number. What is the meaning? Because 1,000 Fahrenheit is not the corporal temperature. 1,000 Celsius degree is not the corporal temperature. So the point is, yes, you can fusion, you can transmit, you can collect, but the important thing is how a machine can interpret data in order to discriminate calibration problems fusion problems or different aspects related to the semantic related to data. There is where we need to deal with this heterogeneity, this autonomy, because the data sources are completely autonomous. So the single world computer collects data using the sensors and the information is transmitted to a given gateway. And after that, a given edge server and from there to a given decision-making model, but through all the row, the data need to be interpreted, need to be analyzed. Even, even more, when we deal with different kinds of sensors, we will deal with different level of accuracy and precision. Different kind of sensors, different kind of accuracy and, sense, and, and, and a precision, and also different characteristics associated with the maintainability. And the calibration will be an, an essential thing. Why? Because if you read a lot of articles, you can write um, search expression is a Scopus, IEEE, ACM, etc. And think about it. 
When I read an article associated with sensor networks, body sensor networks, etc., what is the number of articles talking about how to calibrate the sensors from which they obtain the data? Because there are a lot of articles that are supposing that the sensors will work perfectly over time and no event, no issue will affect the way in which they collect the data. But we know that the entropy exists and the entropy affects the whole system. Even when the sensors are calibrated at the beginning, this problem will appear over time. Even if you see um, different critical aspects like particulate matter monitoring and the effect on the people health in the city, etc., one of the main concerns is the calibration. Why? Because we need to be sure that the data that we are reading, interpreting in order to uh, compute uh, um, air quality index is properly established. Uh, in another way, we, didn't, uh, we don't know if the number is representative or not. We, we need to send an alarm and say to the people, hey, take care with the air because the air quality index is bad. So I am assuming that I'm reading information in order to calculate my air quality index before sending any kind of alarm. That is the reason why the sensor calibration is too important, because it allows us to establish a reference pattern. The calibration could fail? Sure, the calibration could fail. But anyway, even when the, uh, uh, the calibration uh, fails or the sensor fails, using the reference pattern, we can try to adjust the different numbers in order to, approach, to get an approaching to the ideal uh, measure. So, why these aspects are especially important? Because all the data provide essential point of view to make decisions. We are expecting an automation about the decision-making process. And one thing that is in, it is important to consider in end-to-end -end solutions is, hey, in all this conversation, we are supposing that all the data belong to us. But what about if I'm taking data from China from different countries of hero, from Argentina, from USA, from India, we are, are we sure that uh, we can transmit the data in a raw way? Uh, do we need to pre-process the data before sending? That is, is that possible or not? So be, we need to be careful about the data regulations, respect the data ownership, respect the data sovereignty, and also to ensure the data confidentiality depending on the kind of application, of course. It is essential to reach a sustainable system. We need to deal with IoT-based systems point of view, but also we need to deal with reliability, decision-making process, sensors, experimental design associated with sensors and the calibrations, and the calibration method itself. All the point of view represent different point of view, uh, sorry, all the different perspectives represents essential aspect that we need to consider in order to reach a sustainable system. In this scenario, or in this context, the IoT Unified Framework proposed an end-to-end -end solution. solution sorry. It tried to consolidate the workload 
through uh, different edge devices. Here you have the reference in which you can read the article in detail, but basically the idea is to describe different point of view in which we need to work on or, or focusing on, uh, on there in order to provide a complete solution. If we, if we want to provide an uh, end-to-end solution focusing on IoT and edge computing, we need to deal with IoT manageability. Hey, we are supposed that all the devices that uh, are working in our uh, edge network is authorized. Uh, uh, we are sure about the identity. We are dealing with uh, secure communications. So the communication is another critical thing. Hey, uh, we need to deal with a given workload distributed in a, in a different set of devices. So how to deploy a given workload in a set of edge devices is not a minor thing. We, we want to capitalize all our infrastructure. For such a reason, we are, um, uh, locate, uh, we are uh, locating our infrastructure as close to the um, entity or customer as possible because we want to take advantage of this um, uh, computation power, uh, local storage solutions, etc., avoiding the cloud, because of course the latency and the rest of the elements associated with network communication and processing are completely different. So how to deal with this workload and the distribution and the uh, resources associated with the workload orchestration is not a minor thing. Also the reliability, how to deal with the different resources, the monitoring, and to be sure that uh, we can provide um, the enough resources to support a uh, workload and its uh, computation. Also, data management and analytics, security is a must. Mainly, uh, a few minutes ago, uh, we are talking about data sovereignty, data confidentiality, and data ownership. And the, uh, other, uh, another point of view is associated with attestation and identity, not only the manageability of the device. So uh, it is a, a critical aspect in which we need to, to at least analyze in a given solution in order to, to get an appropriate, an appropriate answer to the different topics before to release a given solution. Basically, the, 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 um, the idea here is, hey, we can deal with different edge compute devices. We have different edge servers. When we are dealing with different edge compute devices to support different IoT uh, elements, collecting data, video, etc., we are dealing with maybe hypervisors associated with different kind of workload orchestra, uh, orchestrators. And Maybe we can deal with different kind of containerized apl uh, applications and every kind of applications, uh, maybe one, two or more in a given edge compute device, depending of course on the, uh, on the characteristic associated with the device. All the information could be processed locally or maybe the edge compute device could be articulated with a edge server in which the uh, resources are uh, bigger than the edge devices, but we can establish a hierarchical organization between edge compute device, edge servers, and IoT resources in order to, uh, to get um, better coverage and density in the area uh, uh, where we can monitor, uh, we can monitor a, a given aspect. Uh, Let's say, for, uh, for instance, uh, we, maybe we can monitor the weather in a given region. So uh, the different organization associated with 
IoT devices with TINI, weather uh, monitoring station, jointly with S compute device acting as a gateway and edge server acting as a, a machine, a, 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 a deep, ne a deep neural network models a server could be a tentative organization. All depends, of course, of the uh, area to cover and also the resource associated with the project. In this context, in this context, if we need to deal with, let's say, computer vision applications, Intel Open B, uh, Intel uh, Open Vino is a set of libraries and uh, tools that are very helpful. Let's say you can uh, do your own uh, deep learning model using PyTorch, using the framework that you want. Deep learning, uh, Open Vino provide a model optimizer that take your model, optimize the model for running on Intel hardware, and it is optimized for running in that specific hardware. So it is not the same if you are putting your uh, deep learning model on a given, uh, let's say, axion-based server or a given Core i5 or Core i7 uh, NUC. Uh, every single uh, hardware has a set of instru specific instructions and, and the idea of these uh, tools and, and libraries is optimize your model to get the best benefits from every single hardware in which you pretend to deploy the model. That is the function. It is completely uh, free. Here you have, I, I will show you briefly, the website, let me, uh, I will change my screen quickly. And here, here, if you, if you search in Google, uh, in, in your, uh, in Google or uh, in internet, Intel Open Vino, you will find the website here. You, uh, you can uh, download the last version, 2022.3. This is the last long-term uh, version. Here you will, will have different resources associated with reference implementation, how to use uh, this library and tool, and also how to deploy the, uh, the different elements um, through different uh, components. But even if you want to, uh, to check uh, this solution running uh, locally in, in your own laptop uh, or running in a um, containerized image on, Dex, uh, on um, uh, uh, Docker Compose, you can, you can do it. So uh, you can start very easy with this platform and tool in order to check uh, your deep learning model. And coming back to uh, the previous presentation here, this is a quick uh, advance of the rest of the information that you will receive with um, the, present, the, present, the PowerPoint file that I will send to Prashant. Uh, here you have the GitHub, rep uh, GitHub repository to different kind of applications. Uh, in this point, you have uh, social distancy, uh, computer vision model to estimate the social distancy, the um, capacity in stores, the um, walking sense uh, uh, inside the stores to line monitoring, different kind of application that, uh, that you can check and download and apply in your own solution. It is completely free to download and use. So I will come back. Yeah, okay. So basically, you provide your model, the optimize the optimizer from OpenMin optimizer, transform your model to a specific intermediary code to be run in a specific uh, hardware platform. And that is uh, pulled from the specific device using only the runtime uh, based on, uh, on a given uh, containerized image. And in a given uh, uh, device, you will run 
your um, runtime, the open mean runtime, plus your um, optimized model, and that is all. This device could be a simple NUC or a single world computer in which you can run your optimized model. Okay, but here we deal with reliability and we are talking about, hey, we are processing a video in a given retype. We have a set of camera, we are identifying not the person, we are identifying the product that a given person profile want to buy. Why? It is not important who is the person. I don't care about the identity. I, I even, I, I don't want to know uh, the identity. Just I want to know, is a child, is an elderly person, or is an adult? Why? Because the kind of product that they are trying to buy, I want to know the interest, but in that point, I'm, mon I'm monitoring the different video streaming in real time, but also I need to monitor that the whole system processing the video streaming is working properly. And that is the focus on reliability, because if the system fail, the analytics will fail. If the analytics, and the analytics will fail, the business will fail because we are trying to interpret the customer behavior based on data process, the video data processing. And it is very easy. If for any reason, any event, the video processing doesn't work, we never know what kind of product, what kind of service, what kind of association product service we can sell in the future. And that is the idea of this video. Look, I will play shortly. Let's suppose even a search account. All this information, it's very helpful to identify the customer profile even, the kind of product we are analyzing in real time through different deep learning models, what kind of product, what kind of service, how to provide associations between product but if something was wrong, we don't have such an information, but the customer continues buying different kind of product and service. And that, that is missing information. When we have missing information, we are not reaching the service level objective. And if we don't reach the service level objective, we have a problem, a business problem. For such a reason, the reliability try to focus and solve this situation as soon as possible. Because as fast we solve a situation, as fast we have updated the information and we know the current state. If, think about this scenario when you scale the number of stores in which you are processing the video. That is essential to reach the scalability. If you are not, if we if they don't have reliability, never will have scalability. That is the main point of this simple video. As I mentioned briefly before, here uh, I will introduce four quick applications associated with OpenVINO in which you can download and and, and use in your own applications. Basically, uh, this basic application here in this link, you will have access to the GitHub repository with all the source code. And basically, the, it, it uh, use GStreamer, indeed, DLStreamer. Uh, it is a, 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 a GStreamer plus a set of tools uh, from OpenVINO in order to deal with different uh, stages associated with the video, video processing. In this case, basically, we are dealing with video ingestion, person detection, person tracking, and um, uh, distance cal uh, calculations for trigger different kind of alerts in order to uh, automatically detect if some person in a given queue or line is uh, respecting or not the separations between persons, uh, even, here we have another kind of application in which 
here you have the, the link to the Shira Hub repository. I will share in a few minutes. Basically, the structure of the pipeline is the same. We have a different video ingestions coming from a given file or coming from um, a live video streaming in which we can detect persons in order to track how, uh, what is the number of persons inside the store and uh, um, to trigger an alarm when the capacity associated with the store is not respected. Also, we can detect uh, if a given um, line is respecting the circulations for persons, mainly uh, in the situation that we deal a few uh, months ago, like the lockdown, and I, <laughs> I wish that that uh, uh, be history. And, but it, it is important in, let's say, if you are uh, monitoring a highway or uh, unidirectional uh, ways, that is an important uh, way in which you can easily to detect some kind of uh, atypical behaviors. And the last one is uh, uh, you can get additional resources in, from this uh, link. Yeah, you can reach a, a difference of code, tools, application, in addition to uh, the available uh, on the OpenVINO website. And last but not least, even when we have a lot of applications, we need to mention this aspect. Why? Because we are dealing with video processing, audio processing, and data, different kind of data. And we need to ensure different aspects because we are dealing with data that not necessarily belong to us. That implies, hey, if you are training a model, you need to be transparent about what is the objective associated with your model. You need to communicate clearly that your model is, for instance, to detect products and not person. To analyze association between products and services and not association between persons. Why? Because there are limits, ethical limits. In, yes, we know that we are collecting data from any place that we want and we, we can have access. But that, does, uh, that doesn't imply that we can do anything with data. We need to respect different stages and, and we need to think about, to be clear about how, to date, how the data is processed. How the model respect different point of view associated with the justice and fairness. How the model respect the normal efficiency it is how we can communicate the responsibility and privacy and respect the privacy about data, about the data that are coming from a given video. As you know, from a given video, we can extract a lot of information. Even if we don't have sensors, we can simulate or extract data from video uh, associated with different metrics, different persons, different vehicles, different objects tracking about objects, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, in, in all these kind of applications, we need to have a limit. And that is the point in which we need to articulate with the data sovereignty, ownership and regulations. And closing this presentation, I'm sorry for, because my time, just a, a, a quick uh, synthesis. Please, uh, here uh, I will I will share in a few minutes the the links and the presentations. Uh, you can reach OpenVINO if you want to focus on video processing, audio processing, uh, NPL, natural processing language. A lot of different models that you you have available in the Zoom models, a repository that is coming uh, inside the OpenVINO. And there, in addition, you will have a, another um, reference implementations associated with social distancing, capacity, one-way monitor, and line monitoring. But 
anyway, remember that the reliability is the key in order to get an scalable system. And to have an scalable system is the key to reach the economy scale. And that, that is essential in order to deal with rational budgets. And in this path, the AI ethics is essential. How to deal with the data, respecting the data ownership, respecting the data regulations in general, data policies. And there are, uh, we are in a world in which the networks doesn't have a limit, they don't have limits, but anyway, we need to respect the different uh, participants, the stakeholders, and how to process the data. Thanks. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for so much for this invitation. Thank you, sir. Your session was filled with a wealth of knowledge and has enlightened us about the wide scope of the subjects. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us today. Thank you.